I'm here to assist you with all your test equipment needs, from multimeters and test weights to patient simulators and x-ray analyzers. If you need guidance or you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write me at jbarber at bcgroupinternational.com. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Folks, I am here trying to go over some of these power supplies. I've got a whole variety of them that have been donated over the years. And, you know, I really would like to figure out if some of them are working. If they're not, if they are working, maybe I can put them into service. So, up here, let's show you real quick how I test some power supplies. Now, first, let's go over the equipment. Traditional multimeter, I have it propped up. It's perfect. This is my Klein MM700. Probably one of the best multimeters at a reasonable price point. And over here, I've got an old school rheostat. And um, some rheostats actually have some level of isolation. This one does not. <clears throat> this one's definitely old school. And you can see that the meter is over 120 volts. That is because this guy actually does have a tap that goes over 120 volts. So rheostat basically acts like a voltage divider and it's got a wiper and a long coil. And that wiper goes down the coil according to that little knob over there. And that's how you divide up your voltage and it limits the amount of current. So I currently have it hooked up through this guy because I can attenuate it. Let's say this guy's getting a little too hot too quick. I can turn down the AC voltage and that way there I can get a better look at this power supply with my FLIR gun right here. So the FLIR is a fantastic device. It uses infrared and it does a photographic overlay so that you can see exactly what components are getting hot and you can adjust how fast things get hot using the rheostat. So if it gets way too hot, way too quick, like in a dead short, you can turn it down quite a bit. And here you can see the traditional readout. So I can actually change that so that we can lower the photographic camera and we can increase the infrared readout, as you see there. So that is this guy. Now I have zero volts output on this guy. You can see as we turn down the overlay, that right over here, right on this side, there is components that are getting hot. So that means that this guy, it doesn't have output, but there are some functions of it that are working. Like all this over here is technically working. In other words, I would never get electricity over here to my switching components, which are underneath the heat sinks. Now this guy is irregular for a power supply because unlike many power supplies that have one power supply function, you can see that on this one, we have two power supplies that are technically in parallel although I'm pretty sure that they have a variety of outputs. In fact, I know there is because there's a little legend there, but we have one power supply over here and one power supply over here. They are almost identical, even on the underside. They're close to being identical with its monitoring components. This is a very complex power supply compared to some of these other ones. And um, I figured, you know something, let's go ahead and just check it out with the FLIR and without even having a load on it, I can see that right over here, on this side, I actually have output. On this side here, it's cold. Matter of fact, I, ca I can't even really feel that it's getting warm over there. However, you can see that it is giving off infrared radiation and this entire side over here appears to be active. I still have no output, but it could be waiting for both sides to have output or this side could be dragging that side down through uh, short prevention, you know, overcurrent protection. But anyway, I figured it was a really good demo. And in doing so, let's go ahead and flick this guy off. We'll disconnect my AC. And let's see on the FLIR. Ooh, come on, buddy. There we go. Let's take a look on the FLIR at how a normal power supply will heat up. So this guy should be very much so cold to the touch. And according to this legend, common is pins four and five, 12 volts is pin one. So there's pin one, there's pin four for common. And we'll connect that AC up on this side. 
Now, this guy here has three different voltage rails. Uh, so I have a negative 12 rail, I've got a 5.1 volt, and I've got a, a positive 12 volt rail. So all three of those usually need to be checked. And before I sell any of these devices, any of these power supplies or anything online, I do check them. So here we go. And you can see that for the most part, this guy is cold. And we flick it on, we give it some of that juice. And it is definitely picking up a lot of infrared. You can see it really quickly. And you can adjust the sensitivity up and down on this guy. So you can see I definitely have some heated components over here. And over here, what about, yep, right over here near the power output side on the filtering caps. Now this power supply is functioning and I, I get it that the overlay is not that good. You've got a little bit of parallax between the two cameras. You got an infrared camera and then you got the photographic camera and uh, the visible light spectrum camera and the other one, because they're not exactly in the same spot, you have something called parallax, which means you're looking at it from this angle or from this angle and they never match up perfectly. So depending on a set distance, whatever that distance is, they will have a perfect meetup point. And that's why the closer I get, the more off it, the heat signatures appear to be from the real components that are doing it. But yeah, so this guy here appears to be perfectly normal. So right over here, I have my rectifying diodes or my bridge rectifier that is obviously gonna get warm. Now, if I were to put a load on this guy, then some of my, um, my diodes on the output side or some of my major switching components, those ones would start to show that they're getting really hot. But I currently, I'm basically running it on no load. But yeah, that's basically how you check it. You can see I've got my 12 volts on this one. This one here, I got my 5.1 volts, which is good. 5.1 volts on this one. My final rail. It's going to be this one. I have my negative 12 volts. So this power supply is good to go. I will clean it up and probably package it in some anti-static wrap and it will be ready to go into service. So that folks, follow the legend on your power supply. I generally use a rheostat or an isolation transformer when I'm testing these and that's just for safety reasons. The rheostat just gives me a luxury of being able to turn down the voltage in case it does have a short. That way there, the FLIR can help show me where the short is in short order. And if you have a series of power supplies and you're trying to figure out which one is working, which one's not, I'll tell you what, one of these FLIR guns, fantastic. This one here is an HTI HT19 thermal imaging camera. I'll leave a link down in the video description so you guys can take a look at it. Pretty cool device. And if you're looking at a complex series of electronics, you want to find the which one's getting hot, you want to find out which ones are powered on, this guy will let you do it. And you can also use this for going around your house in the wintertime or in the summer to figure out where you're gaining or losing heat. Pretty cool that I can sh take a look at all my windows and whatnot, and I can tell exactly where my energy is leaking in my house. Cool little device. But anyway, just going through power supplies today, and... Uh, Hopefully I get these ones back up and going. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below with what you'd like to see in future videos.